Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. My name is Rebecca Felgate and today we are asking how much pain can humans really handle? Let's start off by saying that pain as a notion is totally subjective. I know what pain feels like to me, but I have no idea how it feels to you and vice versa. One person's ability to cope with pain is entirely different to another's, although some have tried to quantify a pain measurement in the past. Meet the 1940s scientist who invented the controversial dolorimeter. The dolorimeter was a method of study conducted on patients by burning them with the aim of quantifying a measurable unit of pain. Those units of pain were intended to be placed on a scale to find out exactly how much humans can really handle. The scientists involved came up with the doll measurement along a scale of 0 to 10.5. It was thought that humans could handle 10 dolls of pain and those carrying out the test recorded measurements of up to 8 in their experiments, leaving some patients with second degree burns. While the doll measurement was never accepted into scientific practice, today we still use the more ambiguous pain measurement system Systems for patients receiving medical care, albeit they are slightly less dramatic. These days, when receiving treatments, patients will be asked to specify their pain level on a scale of 1 to 10, with children asked to point to a face on a sliding scale from happy to sad. We feel pain as sensory receptors in our skin send messages through our nerves to our spinal cords, brain stem, and then onto our brain, where the sensation of pain is registered. This is the way it works for humans, however, we know that as individuals, pain is not felt in exactly the same way person to person. You may often hear people talking about their pain threshold, but what does that mean? Well, the human body has an enzyme called COMT. An enzyme is something that speeds up a chemical reaction, and in this case, this enzyme helps break down dopamine. To cut a long story short, the less dopamine in the body, the less pain a person feels. Each person's body is different, and depending on activity and levels of COMT in their bodies, people will feel different levels of pain, even with the exact same injuries. On top of that, there is indeed an argument for mind over matter, meaning that some people are just mentally able to process pain better, ultimately making precise quantification and comparison of how much pain a human can handle almost impossible. It is also possible to develop a tolerance to pain. For example, a child who falls down and grazes their knee for the first time is unlikely to feel the same level level of pain as someone who has done it a hundred times. People who suffer from chronic illnesses probably wouldn't flinch at menstrual cramps or the pain of being kicked in the shin. Pain is something that you can learn to live with. Ok, so people are different, fine, but even if reached at different times, is there a level of pain that humans can hit after which they can take no more? Well, actually. Yes. When a person experiences sudden pain, their heart rate and blood pressure can rapidly decrease, affecting the amount of blood flowing to their brain, causing them essentially to short circuit and pass out. How much pain it would take for an individual to pass out though cannot be universally measured because, again, it depends on that person's sensitivity to pain. Is enough pain to pass out really the ultimate amount of pain a person can take? Scarier than simply blacking out from intense pain, humans can actually die from it, meaning there really is a limit to how much pain we can handle. While in theory the extent of an injury should be the thing that kills you, with the pain a side product of that injury, it is possible for some people to die from receiving too many pain signals leading to circulatory shock. During this period of shock, an insignificant amount of blood, which as we know carries oxygen, reaches a person's organs. The body simply needs oxygen to function, so if the shock isn't treated immediately, a person's organs can fail, leading to their death. This is actually why during World War 1 and 2, soldiers were given morphine capsules to take into battle, which heightened their likelihood of surviving severe trauma by eliminating circulatory shock. These days, US Marines still receive strong painkillers in the battlefield, some even administered via lollipops, which is nice. Death or lollipop? I know which I would rather. So given what we have learned so far, let us ask again, how much pain can humans really handle? The answer is just under the amount it takes an individual to succumb to circulatory shock. But as we know, this isn't universally measurable. We just know that it's probably a lot of pain. A gunshot wound to my leg may feel different to a gunshot wound to yours. It may be enough to send some people into shock, but not others. So at this point, we just can't accurately measure when a person will reach that ultimate threshold 
just that it exists. The topic of pain and the reception of it is rather an in depth topic, so if you feel you have something to add to the topic, please do leave your thoughts in the comments section below. For now, I'm Rebecca Felgate, this has been Life's Biggest Questions, and if you feel like you have learned something from this video, then please do give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who will find it interesting. Life's Biggest Questions is still a growing channel, so if you like our content, you could do us a big favour by subscribing to us and telling a few people about our work. For now, stay curious, stay alert, and never, ever, ever stop questioning. Until next time.